Hello Watch Enthusiasts and welcome to Watch Chronicler. Today I'd like to present five of the most interesting releases over the past month, and these range from the new 007 Omega for No Time to Die, to a peculiar reversed Meistersinger, and a groundbreaking and unprecedented tourbillon from MBNF. Before I begin the video, please remember to like, share and subscribe to catch more content, and follow Watch Chronicler on Instagram for further photography. Most importantly, head over to watchchronicler.com to access full articles, wallpaper grade photos and features exclusively available in written form. Also, find full articles about some of the watches featured in this video, with further detail and information. Known for its 1930s and 40s pilot watches, Larco has become excellent at making some of the most authentic recreations of classic aviation watches without the luster usually seen on modern remakes. However, these watches can be difficult to approach for those who want something a bit less intense. To answer these demands and to give an element of modernity, Larco has released the Ulm and Würzburg. Both housed in a fully brushed 42.5mm stainless steel case, softer lugs and a more delicate crown make these pieces dressier options, but with all the functionality of the originals. These do also add 100 meter water resistance for additional daily functionality. They're given a wide sapphire crystal on both the front and the back of the case, whilst the dials are a testament to legibility. Given the traditional matte black base, these two watches offer the two different fleet configurations, A and B for the pilot and the navigator. These watches are also both luminescent and immensely legible due to the use of superluminova across the Arabic numerals and also the hands. Speaking of the hands, these are thermally blued for a more complex blue coloration and include small seconds at 6 o'clock as an alternative to the larger central seconds and I think a more delicate touch. These are added thanks to the use of the ETA or Unitas 6498 which has 17 joules and gives real owner involvement thanks to manual winding instead of automatic winding as well as a brilliant view through the case back. This view is helped by the fact that it has striping as well as quite beautifully blued screws but ironically the fact that this movement comes from a time of pocket watches means that it's entirely appropriate for a design of this age, which really is quite interesting when you consider the origins of these pilot's watches in the 1930s. For a price of €980, Euros, I really can't fault this new addition to the range. The second watch in this video is from Meistersinger, a brand known for its immensely minimalistic single-handed watches, yet this most recent edition turns the concept on its head, or rather reverses it. Coming from Meistersinger's premium Circularis line, this is the reverse, a one-handed watch which displays the time and the date only. Whilst characteristically restrained, the polished stainless steel case of this watch is quite lovely to behold. It is fully polished and cut on its underside whilst the crown is a modern take on the onion crown. The dimensions of 43mm by 13.5mm in height confirm that this is a watch to be worn every day and not just on formal occasions. However, the dial is much, much more of a talking point. Given dark sunburst blue, the design is classic Meistersinger with gauge-like appeal. Naturally, text is kept to a minimum across the dial, with only the word reverse to indicate that anything is different from all but the most eagle-eyed to spot the numerals. Applied around the dial are gold-plated Arabic numerals, which are a bit more Arabic than usual. By this I mean they read from right to left, just as the date changes in the opposite direction. Interestingly, the highly technical aesthetic of Meistersinger has been retained, which is extremely useful when considering the additional hurdle to get used to such a display. In this same, the central hand is painted white, with a slight counterweight to make it look like the hand on a gauge in a car, for example, which is of course a testament to the, the care taken with Meistersingers to retain this legibility. Furthermore, the work needs to create such a movement has been considerable. Based upon the in-house automatic MSA01 movement, this watch adds 11 parts to reverse the travel of the single hand and date. Normally, in-house movements are purely added for the sake of adding prestige to a brand, however this movement does offer some genuine practicality. Due to the nature of this watch, it won't be right for every occasion, so its 5-day power reserve courtesy of twin spring barrels seems appropriate. Somewhat irrelevantly for a watch with no minute hand, let alone a second hand, it beats at 4 hertz and has 29 joules. The detailing here is rather lovely thanks to blued screws and circular striping. My only reservation with this watch is that whilst the movement is described as in-house, this industry is nothing if not opaque. After doing some digging and examination of specifications, it appears that the MSA01 movement is a very close relative to the again allegedly in-house Christopher Ward SH21. This is nothing uncommon in the industry as I understand the design was conceived by Synergie Horlogère, but it does raise the question, is the Meistersing variant, which is much better decorated, mind you, sufficiently superior to command the additional price? With that decoration and the unique reverse complication, this choice will be down to the buyer, but I think it is a very interesting watch in any case. Last Wednesday, many of us headed over to YouTube to see the new trailer for No Time to Die, the next instalment of the 007 franchise. 
However, in one scene we're given a fair view of the watch on Bond's wrist, which appears to have aged Luminova. This, combined with Ben Plymer's statement a few months ago that it would be a titanium watch, and pre-production shots from a while back showed a Seamaster 300 on a Middle East mesh bracelet, results in a fair idea already existing before the release of this watch. However, this is a watch which has raised some eyebrows now that photos are available. At base, this watch is a standard Seamaster 300M, with a similar 8806 calibre. This gives the watch a 55-hour power reserve, coaxial escapement and Omega's now famous 15,000 gauss anti-magnetism. In spite of this, nothing from the standard watch has been carried over. The new Bond watch features a grade 2 titanium case, which is entirely brushed for military effect, and a matching mesh bracelet. Whilst this seems an odd choice considering the bracelet already available for the watch, I think it does suit the design. Omega have also embraced the vintage craze across the industry, which, whilst odd on a watch with such a modern design, does seem to work. First of all, the exhibition case back has been removed, whilst the sapphire crystal is now heavily domed. The result is fractionally slimmer than the standard watch. Furthermore, the ceramic bezel insert is replaced by an aluminium one, which will age over time and is fully luminous. This design is continued to the dial, which loses the date entirely and has also been changed from ceramic to aluminium. This gives a slightly grey, matte surface which appears very legible and much more similar to vintage military watches than the glossy coloration and, uh, and smooth surface of the modern dial. Interestingly, the waves are also gone, but in their place is a military crow's foot for the British Armed Forces. This is in addition to the cream colour of the hands, indices and text, which all aim to further the vintage feel. For me, this is a bit too much for a watch based on a 90s design. For me, this is a bit too much for a watch based on a 90s design. And whilst I think the specifications and the look are appealing, the vintage association does seem a bit forced. On the back, the case is marked with code for a Royal Navy dive watch for 007, and the year code for the 1962 film Doctor No. Again, these are delightful touches for the collector, yet do seem a bit unlikely for a spy who's supposedly undercover, where actually the watch used in Spectre made a bit more sense, with a very subtle but highly functional GMT bezel, although it does remain to be seen whether this watch does anything in the film, like the Spectre watch did by exploding. Regardless, it's a very handsome watch and a nice play on Omega's military history. My only question is, being a non-limited edition, how will this watch fare against Omega's ultra-modern ceramic Seamaster 300M, which has the same price yet is technically superior as a watch? The next watch is one which most likely won't receive an awful lot of attention, but unduly so because I think it's a quite lovely and understated pilot's watch. H. Moser & C. is a company known for making bold statements in this industry. These have come in the form of van to black dials, a watch replicating the details of a variety of icons in the watch world, or the removal of the Swiss made symbol in protest to the industry, despite being almost completely Swiss made. However, this most recent watch is remarkably restrained. This watch is a nod to the long history of H. Moser since its establishment in 1828, with a watch designed to resemble the military watches of the 1920s, but all whilst giving a new touch. The Heritage Center Seconds Funky Blue uses a 42mm case with a thoroughly rounded shape and vertical ribbing on its sides. This helps to emphasize the height despite only being 11.1mm thick, so as to give a very soft, rounded form. To add to this, it's fitted with wire lugs which curve inwards to resemble the lugs welded to pocket watches in period. However, a detached bezel, large signed pumpkin crown, and squared shape to the lugs allow the design to be remarkably harmonious and elegant. The final product is a watch which appears born of a world of classic aviation, but born into the modern age and ready to fit our requirements. The dial is without a doubt the most eye-catching part of this watch. First one notices the rich, deep blue colour at the centre of the dial. Next is the way the surface is given a sunburst pattern, which disappears into the inky black fumé edge. To return to the vintage element, the seconds and minutes are shown on a railway-style track, whilst the Arabic numerals are solid. By this I mean they are made from a single piece, rather than being applied to the dial on a metal frame, as was the case on the Bushra edition of this watch. In order to achieve this, a technology called Globalite is used. Mechanically, this watch uses the HMC200, an in-house automatic calibre with a 72-hour power reserve, 3Hz beat rate, and exquisite anglage and striping throughout. It also has a particular H. Moser look, with the rounded balance bridge and characteristic rotor weight. This really is a high horology level movement. With this watch, H. Moser has entered an interesting market, as this represents a perfect balance between the Zenith Pilot's 1920s feel and the IWC Big Pilot's purposeful design, whilst offering a more modest size and high horology quality for a price of 13,900 Swiss francs. It's unique on the market, but may be a wonderful piece for the travelling gentleman. The final watch comes from a brand which needs very little introduction, MB&F. 
An abbreviation for Max Booster and Friends, this most recent watch is a perfect example of this communal approach to watchmaking. It also demonstrates something important, that a small brand can impress with a conventional tourbillon for a reasonable price, yet a brand which commands such an elevated price as MB&F must innovate further. Incorporating the watchmaking knowledge of Carrie Vutelainen, the famous Finnish watchmaker, and Eric Coudre, the man behind the seminal JLC gyro tourbillon, MBF have created the legacy machine Thunderdome. Housed within a 44 by 22.2 mm case with a virtually hemispherical sapphire crystal, the movement is a real talking point. At core, this watch houses a manually wound calibre with a 45 hour power reserve and three spring barrels. It's beautifully decorated with anglage and delightful gold chetons around jeweling. This part of the watch has the curved style of Vutelainen and characteristically beautiful finishing. However, it's the complex tourbillon mounted in full view in the centre of the dial which really is the focal point. Surrounded by an enamelled guilloché dial, the tourbillon is something of an oddity. Designed with hand-drawn plans instead of a computer, this triple-axis tourbillon uses two cages instead of just one. It also has a fascinating balance wheel which sits at its core with a spherical shape. Inside this is housed a marine chronometer-style cylindrical balance spring, which ensures excellent timekeeping. Also, as a consequence of using a potter escapement, a 19th century design with a fixed escape wheel which allows much faster escapement motion, the tourbillon cages perform a single rotation in only 8 seconds, 12 seconds and 20 seconds respectively. As a result, this horological spectacle has the fastest moving tourbillon ever made. This watch with its 45 degree dial and blued hands will be available in 33 pieces in platinum and 10 pieces in tantalum to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the hourglass, with 5 of these pieces using an adventure in dial and 5 with a dark blue guilloche dial. Aside from the unattainable nature of such watches, with a price for the 33 pieces of 270,000 Swiss francs plus VAT, I can't help but marvel at the wonder of such a timepiece. Anyway though, I'll conclude the video there, but please do tell me what you thought of these watches in the comments down below, and remember to head over to watchchronicle.com to see more, as well as liking, sharing and subscribing. So thank you very much for watching, this is Armand from watchchronicle.com, out.